Yes, Miss Tilly. Oh, that's her on the piano. Oh. Nihau, Nihau. <laughs> Get him. Oh, that's a sorry. Eh, Nihau. Nice band parade, Nihau, ma, huh? Oh, but what? Nina. Look at this. Look what the collar was dragged in. Not too yeah. bad, not too bad. Conflict over there? Uh, uh, I hope so, uh, but uh, we have had one victory after another, so we okay, shall see. Take it next to no losses, so it's good. Uh, wait for the drums. When the drums begin, we can go. How? How? Oh. Yes. Uh, too bad the cut was not here. Uh, let's go this way, take a right. Slowly, slowly, slow it down. Program station. Throw it out here. No hall, no hall. Oh, is that you, Norman? Perfect. I have a, a gift, a, a parade gift for you too. Hang on. There you go. Oh, let me move out of the way. There you go. Da Hong Wan Sui! I think uh, we should also say Da Xi Wan Sui. Long live the Big West. Da Xi Wan Sui. Oh! Who has candy for. Yeah, who has candy for Flash? Hey, hold it up, hold it up. This is a parade, a victory parade. Hey, Pearly, how are you guys doing? 
The home one sweat. The home one sweat, yes. Here we come out. It's a homecoming parade. Yeah, who has a candy? Yeah, I do. Okay, taking a lift. <laughs> Looks like the Rechinzo's cut up flesh. Oh, oh no. One, two, and we're home. We're here at last. Oh, that was a fun. Thank you, guys. That was a that was a good parade, oh, I think. Thank you, thank you, Cole. No, no, thank you, guys. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. Yeah, we shall see. You know, I think also us being here at least for a little while will uh, take some heat off of uh, the West. No, it won't. No, it won't. Oh. But a nice no. sentiment. We had full on gunfights. Yeah, there's no backing out now. We're, we're not upset at this point. They're going to want to attack them just as much as us. Yeah. Well, they're always riding west. It's now they're coming east before. and west. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk to Taipan before I go. Of course. I can't wait now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, will, I will harvest some Sichuan peppers and maybe some. Uh, whatever other peppers I can find, bring them down to you. Mm -hmm. I can get them oh. imported. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, they might be dried, though. I don't know if I can get the fresh. No, no, that's even better. Keep in mind that that motherfucker in, in the coat and the hand wrappings has been following us since Valentine. Yeah, I know. I noticed. I noticed. Oh. Ah, let me check your bandages. Oh, thank you so much. That was a pretty bloody... Guys, the Decentos have been a real problem for me. I saw her, they were trying to extort you. I don't expect you to, to, to fight them. I just want to let you know what's going on. And if you hear anything, please let me know. Before I went to Pittsburgh, they did. They tried to extort me and, and tell me that oh, the Misfits needed... On what ground? Needed, they told me the Misfits needed to sell their potions. And at the time, they were charging me twice as much as yeah. Billy Joe Barber was charging me. So before I went to Pittsburgh... You know, when they had guns to me and, and made me say yes, I said yes. But then before I went to Pittsburgh, I told them no, and I left for Pittsburgh. And um, they were mad. They caught up with me the other day in Valentine. And it was a whole big thing because I saw Big Tony, and he was being all nice and said, come on out back. I haven't seen you in a while. And I go out back, and they all surround me. And he said, you're coming with me. Don't say nothing. And the guy pulled the ropes. So I ran into the saloon and I started yelling, help, help, they're kidnapping me. You know, and they came in there and grabbed me and broke me and took me out of there. And a deputy came out and grabbed Big Tony and uh, Danielle when um, Leo and Dominic made off with me. They took me up in the snow and they beat me pretty bad. And they took my misfit knife. So they, and yeah, they have to greet them first. Anyhow. Come on in, come on in. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, would you like to meet upstairs, yes? Sure, yeah, we're uh, Okay, um, yeah, these two will go get some uh, tea for everyone, and then uh, Miss Away and uh, the others will be here momentary. Yeah, here we don't even take our own shoes off. I guess technically we probably should, but uh, if your feet smell, the customer come in, you will chase them away. <laughs> I think uh, we should square away a couple of things. First and foremost, oh my God! I'm so oh, sorry. Yeah, cold. I'm so sorry. Cold. Oh, you hit hit an old man. 
Yeah, yeah, listen, we do not need to have any. We don't need to have elder fights in the fucking top floor, please. I have, I have some sorry. Five bucks a punch. Oh, I yeah, Mr. Queen, please go ahead, warm up that face. Right. You've entered the city in um, quite a fashionable manner. It's very nice to see. Heard you had a couple of drums going on, yeah? Well, yes. A firm believer of people of celebrating victory, celebrating resurgence, uh, a rebirth, if you will. Mm -hmm. As we all know, blood is bad for business. Absolutely, it is. Um, we mentioned something a little bit about the cholera being brought in here. Just want to clarify that that went to. Uh, Oh, right, did it use? Whoa, I think one of your no, family no. members was uh, um, offended by this. Is he in this room? Yeah, no. He had to take a nap. He was very tired from the journey. What you saw over in the West, you have to understand. Jack Ketamine is not just a person that one grouping is battling. This is in the front of the entirety of the crossing, if you would. He's looking right. upon this man as an unnecessary entity. I understand. You guys fucked up several times. I don't blame you. He screwed you over. You got back at him. Simple as that. I think we see eye to eye in that sense. Agreed. Okay. Is there any, anything else that you would like to discuss with us, given the, uh, the current bad weather out there? But if there's mm -hmm. nothing, then we welcome you back home and, uh, well, we hope to do further business. Your warm welcome is much appreciated there, gentlemen. The gentiles have been nothing but good to us during our time here. And you are correct. We are home. This is the place where we have created so much community, business, relationships, and everything else in between. And those relationships that we cultivate with inside the city are important to us. Even someone like Solomon, which in a civil aspect, but overall, the business of which we talked about can definitely go away and continue. I would love for us to have a second meeting. Um, but before we do, there is something that I would like to talk about. Taipan has spoon-fed dumplings to every single grouping person inside of the crossing, except for whatever Solomon cultivates. That goes for people like the misfits or the people who do business over inside the melee market all people who look as at St. Marie as a pub for business something that I know the rest of you and your lot have preached since we sat down at this very table enjoying the fine tea you want this we want this when I come back into the city and the people that I cultivated these things with they tell me of the aggressions or transgressions or problems that one another has had with certain groupings in the city I mean of course it's got the influx coming our way but keeping those people and their businesses healthy and alive are important to us as I know this should be important to you I say this to you not as to be an insult or to be a challenge or whatever have you but to come at you as somebody who has a as everybody here Taipan has a common worry Someone like Flash, who was beaten, who was stabbed. That is in no way, shape, or form true. Um, he is, like Mr. Way said, extreme useful. He has eyes and little eyes and ears everywhere across the crossing. He can be a great uh, source of information if you on good terms with him. He was also somebody uh, with a business that Tony and I have started and uh, of course has been interrupted. Someone that I was thinking upon his return uh, to be one of the distributors on the street. Right. I think that honestly, I think we can come to a conclusion that we don't have an issue to what you guys have done. All right. That is their problem. All I want to do is, as Cole said, the ability for him to move is usefulness and resourcefulness. We have to make sure that we are thinking about this for these people. There's so much more that we can do if we have more people on our side. 
he said that, that he's thinking that, that the chainsaws in the cart are going to go to war in Sandani, the war of Sandani. Yeah, now, no. the, last, the, the last time that I checked, I believe that the one thing we've all <laughs> said more than once is the fact that blood is bad for business. Now, at the end of the day, my only question is, does that man's words have any merit? Fuck no. Why the fuck would we go to war with, with the cut? Um, but gentlemen, uh, the other question that comes up to mind, so many questions. Well, I'm so glad to have you here. I believe that uh, addressing the elephant in the room, Jack Kettleman, somebody who was a part of you, uh, the organization, the businesses, he left, he's gone. And other put Solomon, myself, and you, and the three businesses, if you will, but three groupings together. Solomon has had personal issues with Jack Kettleman, as you know. The attack on Lucille, the attack on some of his other people, and he has retaliated. Now I know of your placing to be a place of neutrality with the inside of the crossing, with the inside of Santa Ni. But where does that neutrality lie when that man decides to bring his madness into the city? It's a tough question to answer. Now that's the way it needs to be answer. asked. If there is conflict in the city, from another large organized group, it's best driven out. That's the way we see it. Any minor gangs, any serial killers that are going about, misfits or whoever, anybody that's causing trouble, we deal with it in-house. We deal with it on the streets here in the city. Wars are being brought in. Something that can't be dealt with one day to another. It's got to be driven out. Out of the city. Keep it out. I would agree. All right. That sounds about right. Well, honestly, after the ass kicking she's been giving him out in the West, I'm pretty sure he's not trying to come back here and start any fucking trouble hobbling around looking like some sort of goddamn idiot. We hate he her. That's like, like a little bit of a hobbler, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, what? The cattle, the cattle colts was in your house? Yeah, mm -hmm. they were. Oh, yeah, oh we well, I guess I'll just uh, lean here. Yeah, I guess I'll stand. <laughs> it's one of those days. Yeah, it's really, it's first come, first served here. It's, um... <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Now, I'm not sure if you uh, you have. If any of you received a telegram from Solomon in the last day and a half? Yeah. Mm, I have not. Cole probably has. Line of communications usually to him. About the Dicenzos. Yes. What what specifically did the telegram say? Just so I don't know what I don't need to go over again. Yeah, he says something. The Chenzos are making moves in the city. Be wary. But he is very short. Right. So basically, the Dicenzos came to the house the other day and started saying about how we are hiding in Saint Denis, yet we're going out and hunting down uh, the. Uh, you know, the bastards, Jack Kettleman, all the other kinds, and saying that, oh, we're we're going to break this treaty because they're going to come here and attack and there's going to be violence in St. Denis and that we should basically get the hell out of the city. And that would obviously reduce their... Uh, obviously, you weren't here. And if we're out, that gives the Chenzos free reign to the city, don't it? Yeah. And mm -hmm. we've basically said... You've not seen us in the city much. Because we're riding out pretty much daily. If we're awake, we're not in the city anyway. We're riding out. And they didn't even realize the Kettleman gang has seen us in St. Denis. And we've not done anything to them. We're holding it up. They're trying to bait us. And basically from this and from the way Sonny was talking to us, because he was being a rude-ass bastard, I'll be honest, the uh, defensive pact that we once had with Chenzo's is now good and probably burned. Oh, oh. So who wants to go first? You want me to give you some good news, or? Yeah, we give you some good news right now. Um, yeah, let's get a little closer. It's better. Uh, earlier today, uh, we had the meeting with the Chenzo. Um, they did not admit who, um, 
using any knife on you. Uh, but uh, they did admit to beating you up. They said you were a disrespect or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I said, well, let me talk to Flash. Um, in fact, I have been thinking for a long time, many months ago, that I wanted to um, hire him um, as a distributor for my products. Uh, meaning if uh, you were hired by me, you would be under our wing and uh, be protected. Now, I don't know if you want this or not, but publicly we can say this. Uh, as far as actually if we do business or not, that is uh, uh, for us to determine later. Yeah, but for now, for a little while at least, until maybe they find bigger problems, you are safe. If they well, go back on the word. Problems, so. so we went out west, and we got, well, we seen the Dicenzos were out west in Blackwater. So we got out last, everyone was here and the Dicenzos were roaming around and um, they sent everybody up to a rat, rat's tail fork. And um, we went up there with some tribe and a couple of Annabelle's guys, uh, people who weren't willing, who weren't going to fight. When we got there, the Dicenzos were there. Oh. They were waiting for us. They knew we were coming somehow. They lined us up like cattle took everything off everybody, took down everybody's name and telegram number. There was a lot of women in this tribe there. They were very scared. Wait, a tribe? Like a native tribe? Right. What? Which, they, which uh, tribe? I don't, I don't know. They, um, then started asking questions and found out the guy that told Annabelle that they were coming out that way. He was there. They stood him up shot him in the face in front of everybody. The women were screaming. This was horrific. And there was another man. There was one of Annabelle's men there. They said, you were on the roof the other day, yesterday, during, when we came out there, right? I said, yeah. I said, stand up. Shot him in the face in front of everybody. They said, you tell Annabelle, this is a declaration of war. Oh, wow. I believe it. They told Wait, me if I'm guys... seen in the West again, then I'm involved. They said, I'm seeing out West again. They were at, they were grilling us. They were like, why are you out West? And she told them we went, out, we went fishing and just wanted to get a day away because I wasn't feeling well. And they said, okay, but if I see you out here again, then you're involved. We should telegram Annabelle. Just, just, uh, what happened to the ranch? They didn't say too much. I went to the ranch. I asked to meet with some, uh, well, I just told them I was with Taipan. I'm here to represent Taipan. And uh, I got to talk with Eliza, her name was. I don't know her. Is she the one who shot? Yeah. Who was shot? Mm, she didn't say. I, I told. I said to her. She's that, uh, Danny's his wife. Oh great. Yeah. I, uh, I talked to her. Said that. Um, it's to my understanding that you were the one shot, and she said somebody was shot. So she didn't want to clarify. I let that be. I explained to her that. Uh, that the people that attacked the ranch was in red and black and they were masked, but they were not Taipan. That uh, we do not wear masks. We are warriors, but we are honorable. And as a token of good faith, I gave her a crate of supplies. She didn't say too much, but she appreciated that I came out. Was she alone or many people there? No, 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 no. There were many people there. But something inside of me. You know, the first the first war. We went down. We joined. And there was twenty of us or some or more. And we fought for a few days. We did not do a whole lot. Uh, we met the cattle cult once. Mm -hmm. 
We did security. I was recuperating for a few of those days because Solomon shot me right in the chest. The shotgun. And then all of the sudden, we left them. Even though we were smaller back then, not a lot smaller, but a little bit smaller. I think this uh, hurt the effort. The end of this war, I think you can say that the East won. It was not uh, the West that really won. It was not a win or lose, really. It was more like a draw. The, the East, uh, the West suffered heavy loss. And then all of the Delobos were killed in um, that big gunfight at uh, Fort Mercer later on. It was after the war, but I've always felt very badly about this, how we left. And it was Mr. Wei who said, we must leave, so we leave. He made the peace, not two weeks later, Solomon found him and gave him the smile on his face. The permanent one. Now we're in bed, not in bed, but we are friendly with the cut. Once again, we leave the, the West when they have never once left our... Well, the very beginning, they did not ride, yeah. But very soon after, they began to ride with us. I agree. They have been nothing but the perfect ally one could ask for. But if they call on us to help, it will be to help. We were to neglect them in a time of need. And we lose, I think we would lose an ally in the future. If they are, if we don't help and they're beaten, then there is probably no more Taipan very soon after. <laughs>